Full disclosure, I'm not actually working on a Chrysler front differential today. Instead, I'm working on a GM front differential. Now, you may be saying, what did you clickbait me into, stay at home dad? Well, let me explain. See, both Chrysler and GM nine and a quarter differentials are made by a company called AAM. Now the GM is set up for an independent front suspension. The Chrysler is set up for a solid front axle. I like the solid better. While those are big differences, the center section, the thing you actually rebuild by replacing the bearings and races is nearly the same. Now you don't want to go out and start interchanging parts or anything like that, but if you're getting ready to rebuild your Chrysler 9 and a quarter, if you go out and you find some good instructions on a Dodge truck forum or something like that, something that's going to kind of get you through the, the beginning part of the procedure and something that will get you through the ending part of the procedure, I think you'll find that the techniques and things that I do in this video are really going to help you out a lot with your rebuild. Uh, there's this. I wish I had a Chrysler here to show you step by step everything so that it would look exactly the same. But until then, this is the next best thing and it will help you a lot and you will be able to rebuild your differential. Before tearing into this, the first thing I'm going to do is just kind of rotate this pinion. Just kind of feel how much pressure it takes to rotate it and what the backlash feels like. This will give me a better clue when I'm done uh, what I want. These are 15 millimeter. I'm just going to go all the way around and remove all of them. Okay, I'm gonna start separating this. I know there's a, a dowel or two in here that hold it together even when the uh, bolts are out. So now I'm just gonna try to, I think that dowel's down here. It looks like, okay, so I got one out. The other one must be on this side. It's gonna be a little harder to, There we go. I'm trying to remove this a little straighter. That way, I don't put any pressure on those dowels, and that got it out a lot easier. There we go. Not too bad. You can see some wear on it, but it's not bad. This differential has 185,000 miles on it. You can see in here a whole lot of uh, where it's chewed up those bearings and just spread them all throughout the case. That's why I'm not just going to replace just the one bearing. I'm going to replace them all because where it's chewed that up, it's probably gotten in everything. And even though it's working good right now, it's really reduced the life of it. I'm gonna remove the differential. This is one and a quarter. Remove that nut. I'm 
going to use a two jaw puller to pull the pinion. Pressing this out. Got this new press. I'll have to take advantage of it. Suckers in there. Last my finger over catching that. Oh, if you can call it a catch. But it's out. That was a lot tougher than I expected it to be. Ugh. To remove these bearings off the differential, I'm gonna use that same two paw, two jaw puller that I used before. And I'm gonna also use this attachment. What this does, it fits right there in the middle. Gives me something to pull against. So uh, this came with my puller. Um, so, set that there. Get this wound up. Let's pull it off. off. Flip it over. Do the one on the other side now. Got this all set up on the other side. Let's pull it. As I get parts, bearings off and parts are, are ready for the porch, parts washer, I go ahead and I start soaking them in there. I'll give them a good cleaning after they've soaked a little while. Try to remove these bearings from the housings using a punch. There's 
that one. This one, I'm gonna remove the seal first, the hammer. There's the seal. Gotta make sure I don't hit the housing at all. Pull this pinion seal. Break my hammer. All right, let's try this again. I felt it starting to come finally. Boy, that thing takes a lot of pressure. All right, there's that pinion seal. Next, I'm gonna remove this bearing from the pinion. <laughs> to do that, I'm going to use a egg splitter, also called a bearing separator. These are loaner tools from AutoZone, Advanced Auto Parts, places like that. So because the jaws and my puller aren't long enough to be able to use it on here, and uh, I basically, I tried hammering this off first, that didn't work. So now I am kind of rigged this up on my press. All right, that was good. to get off of there. Here's my shim. It just fell out of there. That's the shim. I don't know if you could see it. That we'll reuse. And then there's my bearing. Okay, I'm gonna use my two jaw puller to pull this race, this pinion race. So first thing I'm gonna do, this is from my uh, uh, race installer set. I'm actually just going to sit that down in that tunnel and that's going to give me something to pull against with my puller. So 
things are in there tight. Coming slowly but surely. I tell you right now, I'm not looking forward to trying to install this race. Oh, so close to being out. That darn puller just fell out. <sighs> so my puller only took it out that far, and then it won't budge it anymore because yeah, I can't get it to grip. Uh, it keeps falling out. So now that I have it that far out, I'm just gonna knock it out the rest of the way, I hope, with this brass punch. we go. It's out. So now for the race on the opposite side, on the outside pinion, uh, I'm going to try knocking that through with that same brass punch. <clears throat> Tell this is not gonna go well. Okay, so I hammered for quite a while. That was not easy, let me tell ya. And it looks like, oh man, I almost have it out. This is a floating brace and will likely just fall out. Um, if it doesn't, one thing you can do is just uh, heat it up and turn it upside down and it will probably come out then. What that allows you to do, and that's actually what I'm gonna do is I'm, I, uh, or actually what I did is I heated this up and uh, it just fell out on its own and then I didn't have to mess with the adjuster and I could keep everything set up the way it was. Um, if it does not fall out for you, what you need, you'll bend this tab up and then you will turn this clockwise. So you're actually gonna turn it in and as it turns in, it'll press out that race for you. I have one more brace left to get out. This one right here. And uh, it's throwing me through a ringer. I believe it's meant to be pulled out the same way we pulled out this pinion, this inside pinion race. Uh, it's got two spots where a puller could grab and then I could sit something there and just pull it right out and it'd be great. Unfortunately, I do not have any pullers with teeth small enough to fit down in there. And um, you would even think like maybe a pilot bearing puller or something might fit in there, but it doesn't. So, I think what I'm gonna do is take this over to a buddy's house and we're gonna use an old uh, welding trick to get races out. And I'm gonna have my buddy just weld a bead around this race and then it heats up and then when it cools back down, it'll shrink toward that bead and shrink this race enough that it'll just drop right out. 
So that's what I'm going to do. So I couldn't get a uh, puller to fit. So what I've done is taken a grinder to these, to this, and I don't know if you can see it, but I've basically grinded off the end of this puller so that it'll fit down into that groove. And she's out. Whew. There is, a, in this stub, there is a small needle bearing. And this bearing is very difficult to remove. I tried a pilot bearing puller that I owned, and I could only fit one side in, and it kept slipping out. So then I tried a blind hole puller that I also owned, and it kept slipping out too. I tried using sort of an old timers method where I forced, tried forcing it out with grease and a punch, but that didn't work. And finally, I picked up a loner pilot bearing puller from Advanced Auto Parts. Now it didn't work by itself, but after I heated the bearing up with a map torch, I was able to finally get it pulled out. There we go. She's out. Congratulations, you have completed this assembly of the differential. Go ahead, take a look at your gears, make sure that there's no teeth missing, make sure nothing's chewed up, make sure it all looks good, and then let's start assembly. But before we do that, let me ask you, please, 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 go ahead, right down below, if you haven't already done it, click that subscribe button for me. Uh, it would really help me and I'd appreciate it. The master bearing kit that I'm using is actually an AAM original equipment kit. Uses Timken uh, bearings. Uh, I think you're good, you're good if you use Yukon or um, what's that other one called? Standard, I think. Standard, maybe? Um, in my case, I happened to pick this up on eBay. Uh, for a lot less than it would have cost me to get any of the others and since this original equipment is Timken Barons, uh, I couldn't pass it up. I like to soak my bearings in some gear oil before I install them. I have my original shim in place already. Got the bearing where it needs to be. And then I just happen to have a piece of uh, spare exhaust pipe sitting around the shop. I'm going to try to use that to press this on. Really not sure if it's going to be strong enough, so fingers crossed. Uh, so let's press this on. Looks good. Got my differential up there. New bearing. Coming up. This is a rental tool. Um, it's a bearing and race installer. It, or it's not a rental tool, it's a loaner tool. Bearing, bearing and race installer that uh, you can get from places like AutoZone. I'm gonna press it on with that and then I'll show you what I do once uh, once that won't take it far enough. So at some point soon, this is going to hit the top. It's not going to go any farther. Now I'm going to take it back up a little bit. So about there. Look at it. Yeah, so I'm not all the way down. I need to go just a little bit farther. So what I'm going to do is pick up the old bearing. Wipe it off a bit. Pick up that old bearing. I'm going to sit it on here. And then have that over top of it. And now I'm going to press it on again. 
and then it'll allow me to get it all the way down. You can do the same thing if you're hammering it or, or whatever. Now it's on there. Real nice. Now we're gonna flip it over to the other side. I've got to think up a good way to to mount this so that I don't put any pressure on that new bearing. Okay, I flipped it over. I've got the barrier hanging down in here, or the bearing hanging down in there with no pressure on it. It's kind of sitting on that differential case. I think that's gonna do it. Okay, I got my new bearing. I'm gonna sit it up there. both those differential bearings on. For installing these races, I put them in the freezer. I string them a little bit. Makes them easier to install. I leave them in there overnight, or at least a couple hours. That should allow that one to get pressed right on. In your rental kit, uh, the largest bearing or race installer is 3.18 inches, which is not big enough to too small. So I'm actually inserting this into the old race, and then we'll press it on using the old race. home when I wasn't expecting it to. So we've got the old race and then the the largest um, installer piece that I have. I'm just gonna see if I can just kind of tap this and get it started where it needs to be. Because once I have it started Then I'm gonna try to press it in. Okay, so what I've done is created my own puller. I'm just using a variety of things I had around the garage old race, an old bearing, um, some washers. Uh, I did go to a tractor supply actually to get these washers, nuts, and, a, and I had the all thread rod already but um, this is just a block from a vise and I'm gonna try to turn this and hope that pulls that brace in right there. Okay, I think we're at the bottom. That's good. I was afraid that that old race would be stuck in there, but it's not. I have heard of people hammering this race all the way in, and that was tough. So if you've hammered one of those in, more power to you. Uh, that's pretty impressive. There's just not enough room to swing, and I feel like it would have taken me about an hour and a half of hammering. After I got this race started by hand, I went ahead and grabbed that piece of all thread rod and uh, made a similar puller to just like I did on the other pinion race. I'm going to pull this one together uh, the same way. Uh, up here on the top side, I've got the old race, some washers. On the bottom side, I've got that old race as well. Uh, sitting against that new race. If anyone's noticed that I've changed clothes about a hundred times during this video, it's because I have four kids and I've been watching them and I've been kind of doing this project over several days in 10-15 minute intervals whenever I can get out to the garage.
go. And I'm just gonna try to press this thing in. It already feels like it's wanting to hock sideways. Here we go. There she's pressing. But once you got it, this little sleeve press that I made works pretty good. It might be best not to use an impact with it. I think she's home. All right. So, don't know if I. So this is what I had on the back side. This is the old race and bearing, and then some washers. And then on the front side, I had the old race and some more washers. Okay, so now that I got both races in, I've also already got this pressed onto the pinion with the shim underneath it. Now I'm going to insert it into here. I'm going to take my new crush sleeve. Insert it. Over the top. And then my new bearing. It's gonna go on next. Once I got that bearing kind of started on there, I took the washer, the old washer, and the old pinion nut, and I threaded that on. Now I'm gonna use that to kind of press that uh, together. Um, make sure you use the old pinion nut right now, not your new one. These are kind of a one-time use item once they've gone on, they uh, really aren't designed to be backed back off. That's actually what these little indentions mean on the bolt, so or on the nut. So I'm trying to get all this play out of here get it down to the point where I'm ready to start crushing that crush washer. Getting closer. So we're going to be setting the pinion preload. Now that I've got all the play taken out of this to where it's down on that crush sleeve, I don't know if you, before I can move this in and out, I'm going to take one of these bolts, go ahead and insert it. Then I'm going to use, this is an inch pound torque wrench. Uh, it's kind of difficult to find inch pound torque wrenches because they're not used very often. Uh, hopefully I'll put a link to where I got this one rather cheap on Amazon in the description of this video. 
But what I'm doing is So I'm just kind of moving this back and forth and that's going to tell me right now I'm not really getting any torque so it's not tight enough but uh, let's tighten it up a little bit. Tighten it up. Hopefully I didn't go too far. Oh yeah. That's much better. So I'm setting the pinion preload right now and different differentials require a different preload. This is a GM nine and a quarter independent front suspension differential. So what I'm looking for since I have new bearings, I'm looking for 15 to 22 inch pounds on here. And you just kind of do a, a quick turn and kind of see, I'm like at eight, nine right now. Yeah, I'd say I'm at nine right now. If you're working on a Chrysler, uh, nine and a quarter front suspension or front differential, you're looking for 15 to 35 inch pounds of pinion preload if you're re if you if you got new bearings. Now if you're reusing your old bearings, if you're doing a gear change or something like that, uh, you are looking for 10 to 20 inch pounds of pinion bearing preload. So I'm gonna be very careful now. Uh, I need to tighten this up a little bit more. And I'm just going to do just a tad and check it and then just a tad and check it because what you don't want to do is over tighten it because this is once you've crushed that thing that sleeve too much there's no going back you have to go get a new sleeve so uh, I'm just going to crush it a little bit now and then check it again. I wish I still had my gloves on. <laughs> okay. So I need to tighten it up some more. So that took me to 18, which is right pretty much at the max, or actually that's right in the middle, that's right where I want to be. For a second it scared me, I was looking at that 8 and a quarter, I was like, oh, don't want to be more than 19, but no. Uh, so that took me right where I need to be, I'm sitting at about 18 or 19, and I wanted to be 15 to 22, so that's one tough job done. Now that we have that tightened to where we want it, uh, I'm going to pull this nut back off. <clears throat> We've still got to install the seal. Put a puller on this. Got my new pinion seal. I like to go ahead and just put a little bit of a gear oil on it 
they come with some lubrication, but it doesn't hurt to just get them nice and wet. And now we're going to just place it where it needs to go and tap it in. <clears throat> Got this brass mallet. If I can get it to go in even with it, that would be nice. If you're wondering why I didn't already have the seal on when we did the other steps, it's because I don't know if this is true or not, but I've heard it can throw off your pinion. Uh, measurements. So, it's a good idea just to install it afterwards in case that happens to be true. Done. Okay, so I'm going to grab this pinion flange. Now that that seal's on, put it back on. washer, put it on, and brand new pinion nut. Get that started. So now I've, I've turned the air down on my air compressor back to 100. And on my impact, I'm turning it down just a tad too. Because what I don't want to do is tighten that crush sleeve anymore as I put this on. So. gear oil on this and this one's going to go in with the writing facing down that's the way uh, the old bearing was installed and this one just goes flat Now it's time to set our backlash. And we'll set that down in there. Okay. Now we'll grab the other case half. And this has been sitting there a little bit. It's got some junk in it, so I'm going to clean it again real quick. Okay, now that I got that clean. Those dowels lined up. And then. Got it sealed back up. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and thread all these bolts on. So we're gonna measure back. What I've done is I've set this uh, differential up with my dowel indicator. Uh, one thing to note is 
you don't want this to wobble. You don't want this to wobble at all. So I sat a tire on top of it, put a hammer underneath it, and kind of rigged it so that it's nice and stable and doesn't move because that'll affect your backlash reading. Um, okay, good. So what backlash, backlash is, is the amount of play um, back and forth in this pinion flange. Um, most differentials, you wouldn't uh, read it this way. This one's a little different. You're going to read it from the flange. You're going to take whatever reading you get, and then you're going to divide it by two. So... Zero, and get it right where it's touching. Mm. All right. Okay, so I got it zeroed, and then I'm just going to move it the amount of free play I have. So it looks like I'm only at six, maybe eight, which uh, divide that by two, so that means three to four. Um, so that's not good enough. Uh, I'm looking for six to ten on uh, in backlash, on, and that's in point zero zero one inches on this differential. This means it's time to mess with the adjusters. You don't want to make changes to one side without making changes to the other. So it's time to break them both loose. This little tab that uh, prevents that adjuster from moving, I can't even get anything underneath it to pry it up. Um, it just won't budge at all. So I'm going to use my little Dremel here and cut it off and I'll replace it with a new tab before assembling this. So I cut this locking tab off and I'll need to replace it. So I'm going to tighten this in like this. And that has pressed out the race and the uh, adjuster. So because I cut the adjuster locking tab off, I have to actually press out the uh, inner piece of that adjuster. Um, so that's what I'm doing now. So I'm gonna press this in. Oh, looks like it fell out right there. And that'll allow me to replace that locking tab. So that pressed right out. Um, make sure you press it from the outside in because that's the way this lip is on it. I have a new locking tab for my adjuster. What I'm going to do is put a little bit of Vaseline on it to help hold it in place while I press this back together. So I'm just putting that in there. And the hope is that Vaseline should keep it in place. Let's press this together now. Now it's time to install this adjuster. There we 
go. Got it threaded. So I went all the way in and then I'm just backing it off to where I think it needed to be. Now I just need to put in this race again. Went right in that way, huh? Put your case back together. Okay, one trick if you're trying to adjust these adjusters, uh, this right side adjuster, and you don't have the proper uh, spanner tool, what you can do is loosen up your case and just kind of loosen up your case. Um, let's see if I can get a camera on it. See this little bit of gap here? I don't know if, you, if I got the camera on it or not, but uh, when you loosen up the case, it takes the pressure off of that uh, adjuster and now I can turn it by hand so I can turn it whichever way I want so I'll go ahead to try loosening this up a couple teeth and see how that affects my backlash real important that I mark where this is at. I'm gonna use a paint pen to mark it. Okay, so I'm just gonna use this paint pen and mark right there where it's at. Okay, so normally you could hit this adjuster with a punch and just drive it out counterclockwise. Uh, this one was kind of seized in there and I couldn't get it to, to budge. So what I did was I bought the, the special tool. So I ended up loosening the right side adjuster by two notches and then tightening the left side adjuster by also two notches. And you always want to do the left side, you always want to tighten the left side after uh, making adjustments to the right side. Um, and the reason is because that makes sure that you continue to have carrier bearing preload. And uh, I know I'm saying right and left. The right is the small adjuster. The left is the, the big one. So, <clears throat> let's see what we've got now. So I'm looking to be between, between six and 10. I'm at zero. Now I'm at uh, 16 or 18, zero, 16. So that puts me at eight. That's right in the middle of where I want to be. So my backlash is now good. Once you have your backlash set, then you can go ahead and put back in these locking tabs. I'll cinch that down with a socket wrench. Okay, I have some gear marking compound here and tooth, old toothbrush. And I'm gonna paint up these gears and run a pattern and see how it ends up being. So I'm just gonna spin this pinion right around. Backwards. Okay. 
So, you get a good look at this pattern here. Uh, what I'm looking at is, I want to be centered in the tooth. So, this direction, I can be low or high. But, up and down this direction, I need to be centered in the tooth. And, it looks like I'm centered. It's centered on the tooth, um, up and down, but it's low this direction. And I'm okay with that. Um, if I was putting in new a new gear set, uh, I would probably change the pinion depth to try to raise this up on, <coughs> excuse me, to try to raise this up on the gear. Um, but since, uh, since the gears are the same, and I'm just using the factory shim, uh, I feel like it. I don't need to change pinion depth. There's no reason to mess with it, and um, I'm okay with that pattern. Going to take a punch and a hammer, and bend this other adjuster down. this back apart okay I'm putting this one this bearing in writing out it's darted here in the hole let's see if I can tap this thing gently and evenly a seal that goes over this Put in this bearing. I could press these in, but they go in pretty easy with a hammer. That's so a lot easier than trying to get the press set up. So I'm cleaning up the surface real good. I'm gonna wipe it off and then I'll I'll blow it off with my air compressor. I'm also gonna clean the top of the other one as well. And then we're gonna seal this up. Whenever I have bolts that I'm reusing and I'm gonna be setting to any type of torque spec. I like to go ahead and just clean them up prior to reusing them. That way I don't have to worry about being off at all on what the torque is. You have to do this? No. You don't. But it doesn't hurt. I'm using Permatex Ultra Black 
you seal this case back up. I'm just gonna go ahead and just put a nice bead of this stuff all the way around. One thing to watch out, I'm not gonna do any of this area here. Um, and the reason for that, and I'm, and I'm not gonna do a little strip right there either. Um, the reason is I don't wanna block any flow of uh, oil in this case. And uh, if you look at the opposite side, you can see this is designed to actually be able to throw some oil up in here. And so if I went across here, uh, I'd risk blocking that passage. So, uh, and the same goes for here. So what I'm doing is just going around the outside of this case. Got a nice bead of this all the way around now. Time to seal it up. Back on. Okay. Take a little brass hammer wherever that's at. Tap this down. Okay, time to put the bolts in. I'm gonna use a little bit of uh, thread sealant or thread locker. Uh, this is, I just happen to have some Permatex stuff here in the shop, but uh, I'm just gonna add a little bit to each one. Doesn't need to be anything crazy. get them started then I'll tighten it down with my air ratchet so I'm gonna go from one side to the other back and forth uh, torquing these to 55 foot-pounds using a star pattern You can go ahead and put this inspection cover back on. This is where things get drastically different between the Chrysler and GM differential. So go ahead and put your axles on it and get everything back together. And then I'll see you when it's time to fill it up with oil. Put back in my drain plug. Then I'm going to go ahead and fill this thing up with some Mobile One 75 weight 90. Full synthetic. Ugh. Mine ended up taking just slightly more than two quarts. I was holding it level like this and went until it started coming out the inspection hole. If this video helped you, Please help us by clicking that subscribe button. We need 1,000 subscribers in order to get monetized. Daddy? Thank you. Daddy? Daddy? <laughs> I think I'm safe. I want to.